Hello boys and girls, I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, part of BPALPICS.com. I'm a professional handicapper, and uh, my expertise is the NHL. However, I pay people to do other picks on my site, and you can get that for free. I will sit there in the, you can go there in the comment section and get it for free. We're sitting at 114 units for the MLB this year. Overall, we've never lost money, ever. And now we're going to be looking at the futures for the New Jersey Devils from FanDuel. In FanDuel, you can get over and under points for a season for every NHL team. We did the Carolina Hurricanes. We did the Columbus Blue Jackets. You can go check out those from my YouTube channel. And now we're going to be looking at the New Jersey Devils, who are sitting at 104 point points for 0.5 points for the 2023-24 season. I'm going to be looking at this analytically. I use uh, JFresh Analytics in this video, but I use many analytics, and I study analytics all summer to make my picks is why I do so well. But JFresh is my fave, so we're going to be using JFresh as we look at how if the New Jersey Devils are going to get over or under 104 points. So let's start. Okay, as you can see, this is FanDuel. I wanted to show you that. 104.5 points. Minus 111 for over. Minus 115 for under. 104 points. What did we get last year? taking a bit New Jersey had 112 points last year so we're looking at do we think New Jersey is gonna drop eight points next year and based on what has happened in the East I can see why they would put this number there the Rangers got better Carolina got better Pittsburgh got better Washington got better Boston dropped, Toronto probably got better. You can make a case for that. So we're going to look at how are the New Jersey Devils going to get better. And we're going to look at player by player. Are they going to get better this year or not? Tyler DeFoley, they picked him up from the Calgary Flames. As you can see with his analytics, he's looking like a fantastic player. Last year, he went through the roof with Daryl Sutter. His defensive analytics were crazy. His offensive analytics were crazy. His war was crazy. The year before, he dropped. He hasn't been like that for a long time. So is he going to be like that with New Jersey? Well, let's take a look if he's going to be able to keep on going the way he was. Um, you got Jack Hughes, of course. He's a beast. And uh, you look at Jack Hughes, his analytics. Crazy. Look at this. 95% even strength offense, 66% even strength defense. His offensive analytics are off the charts. Didn't play on the PK. The guy's insane. You know what? If you were to look at McDavid, he's not far off. So you got Jack Hughes playing with Tyler to Foley, who they didn't have last year. And 
Jesper Bratt. So we'll look at Jesper Bratt. Jesper Bratt was even strength. Defense was poor. His offense was amazing. He was on a contract year. That doesn't surprise me. Um, he dipped huge defensively last year. He Actually, he dipped huge and came up a little bit. But before that, he played really well defensively. This is the guy that's playing for a contract. It doesn't surprise me that he doesn't play as well defensively as he did before. He's trying to put up numbers that if you were to go to arbitration, which he did, the numbers matter more than the analytics because arbitration doesn't look at analytics. So he went off offensively last year. I think it's very possible he could come back defensively. He's probably one of the worst defensive players for New Jersey. And as you go through this, you will see what I mean by that. Timu Meyer. Incredible defensively. 78% even strength defense, 96% even strength offense. He improved greatly last year in that regard on both sides. The guy is going up, up, up. They paid $8.8 .8 million for him for eight years. They got a steal. You can't find players like this. He's big. He's solid. He plays both ways. He knows the game inside and out. And I know what they gave up for him with uh, <clears throat> Macamadoulin who is a fantastic prospect, and I think that New Jersey will do well for that. But, I mean, this is an analytics team. I don't know if I told you that. Fitzgerald is a huge analytics guy, and they got a monster in Team Meyer. Heischer. Let's look at Heischer. Look at this, 90, incredible. First liner, 77% defense, incredible player. And he improved at 24 years old, offensively and defensively. This team is not getting less than it was before. It, it's not going to drop. Every single player on this team is perfect for what you want in a team in the NHL today. So we'll look at Mercer. The kid is, what, 21 years old. He played it as a second liner a little over his head last year. And is he's not running a line. Okay, at this point, at 21 years old. But his goals per 60 and his assists per 60 are fantastic. He's finding a way to contribute to the offense as he learns the offensive and defensive part of his game. And look at the trajectory here. It's up, 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 up. 21 years old, a kid putting up these kind of analytics is absolutely fantastic. Then they went out and got, of course, Palat last year. And uh, we'll look at Palat. Palat has won cups. Of course, they needed that type of... It's a little different when you get to the playoffs. It doesn't always pan out regardless what you are analytically. But look at this guy. As a third liner is... He's an above-average defensive player. His even-strength offense is amazing. Like, there isn't a player, a team in the league that has these defensive analytics for each player. And that includes the winner of the Cup last year, 
with Vega. So stick with me and comment in the comment section or subscribe to my channel. And we'll look what Vegas was last year. Um, Tampa and Colorado. None of them are even close to these analytics. Not even close to these analytics. So you kind of get the idea where I'm thinking on the over and under here. But I want to keep on going down here as you realize just how amazing of, of a team that has been built. Hala. Not great defensively, but he's above average though. Third line center. He was playing as a second line center last year and he's going to go to, and he didn't do too bad as a second line center, but he's going to probably be playing as a third line center. So his competition is going to be a little easier. He was already above average offensively. I mean, 54% even strength defense is not bad. When Colorado won, their worst player was Kadri at 48% defense. Last year, Cotter was Vegas' worst player at 40%. But they did not have the defensive analytics of what New Jersey has now. Not this good. Most of them were around 50 to 60%. This is a team that has been built analytically and I believe has a really good chance of winning the cup next year. Holtz doesn't have any analytics as he was a rookie. And then you have Noshik who is a fantastic defensive player. McLeod is just below. And look at this Bastion. Look at Bastion at a, as a fourth liner. Look at this guy. Ninety five percent defense as a fourth liner. The guy is insane. Yeah, your war, you his war, which is wins above replacement. You can find players who can do better. But at minimum, for a guy that's almost a hundred percent defensively, this team is insane. All right, let's let's look at the defenseman. For the New Jersey Devils, really quick. Jack Hughes doesn't have any analytics. He was a rookie last year, but he looked really, really good. Now, Dougie Hamilton. Most people have them have him as an offensive defenseman. And you would be right. Gotta find him here. And you would be right, he mostly is. See, 21% defense, but almost 100% offensively. His war, there's not too many guys that can replace him as a second pair defenseman. His power play is fantastic. He probably isn't worth the money that he's being paid, but he's one hell of a player nonetheless. Uh, one, oh, wait, I wanted to look at that, too. Look at his defensive analytics. Way down. I don't even understand. He used to be an elite defensive defenseman. He had the injury, maybe that's it. But he dropped huge, and he came up last year. Is there a chance he could come up again? I would think probably. After an injury like he had, he was trying to get himself back in, focused on offense more, which takes less time on the body. I could see him crushing next year. Kevin Ball and John Marino. Ball, 
is a big dude who hasn't got there yet. 16% war, they're working on him, he's only 23 years old, but he's a big motherfucker. His offense has improved since he came into the league. He reminds me of what they thought Sherratt would be in Detroit, or Sherratt would be. Um, I, he's got about three, four years to improve here, and they're giving him everything they got. He's got a huge shot. Huge shot. Um, but for the most part, he's still trying to figure it out in the NHL. I just got a really good feeling that he's going to figure it out. And, when, and that's the reason why he's getting the minutes that he did before. So let's look at Marino. Who they got from Pittsburgh last year, which is just stupid. It really is. It's ridiculous that they got him. He, 94, he's an elite defenseman. Pittsburgh doesn't have any defensemen. They picked him up for virtually not, nothing from the Pittsburgh Penguins last year. Yeah, he's not giving you much offense. No doubt about that. But he is an elite. When it comes to elite defensemen, John Marino is the prototypical elite defenseman in the NHL. He's only 26 years old, and he's only signed for 4.4. This is an insane amount of value. Siegenthaler, who they got for, I think it was a second-round pick from the Washington Capitals, would normally be a top four defenseman in any, look at 97% defense. He's going to be third pair this year. In most teams, he would be a sec, uh, a 3-4 easy, easy, easy. He's probably sitting in the 5-6 this year because of his offensive deficiencies. He has very virtually no offense whatsoever. He's fantastic on the PK. My God, man, this team is stacked. It is absolutely stacked. And then they went and got Colin Miller. From the Dallas Stars. And watch these stats for a sixth guy. 63% defense. Yeah, he doesn't provide much offense. But he's fantastic defensively. He stayed stagnant in that area. You could probably replace him. But for the price they got him for, they are kicking ass. This team is kicking ass. The only problem I have is Vanacek as their number one goaltender. And Schmid could I like Schmid an awful lot, but I'm not sure that he's ready yet, and I don't like Vanacek. And as you can see analytically, his PK war he's sitting at a book. He's like an above average 1A defenseman or goaltender, which I know you'll say, well. Look what Vegas did, and I would agree with you. I, I don't think you need an elite goaltender because when we do our Vegas pick, our Vegas uh, analytics, you'll see that New Jersey is way above Vegas right now. Analytically, they're, they're, it's not even close. It's not even close. Colorado had the best defensive forwards in the league. Tampa Bay did, Vegas did, and they won the Cup. New Jersey has the best defensive forwards and defensemen we have seen since analytics were even invented. This team will go over 104.5 easy. I, I am not surprised that they win if they win the President's and it's probably my team to win.
the cup. There you go. That's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Subscribe to my channel and go over to my Twitter or what have you and bpalpix.com. If you like making money on NHL at all or anything for that matter, go there. I'll put you in there for free for a while. You can see how amazing it is.